Raw TV, real and willing television. We have an excited audience tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Amanda Button. And I'm Taylor Wilkerson. Tonight we're talking about friendship. We're talking about good friends, bad friends. We're talking about can guys be good friends with girls? What do you think? Can we be good friends? Probably not. Okay. Well, we're That's talking about superficial friends like Amanda, and we're talking about just all sorts of friends. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we also have a very special guest panelist tonight, uh, Pastor Andrew Gard, who is our campus pastor here at Southeastern University. He's going to be weighing in on the discussion as well, so it's going to be a really good show. Don't go away, and here is For or Against. No, I don't think they can. I think eventually uh, one or the other end up catching feelings, and before you know it, uh, their strings attach and jealousy comes into play. Yeah, uh, I think if they have common interests and uh, good motives, for sure. I do. I do. I think I'm going to be friends. It's just it takes a very special relationship. I don't know. It gets it gets a little hairy. I guess it sometimes it doesn't matter. It's okay that guys and girls can't just be friends, but uh, depending on your life circumstances, like when you're married and so forth, it probably matters quite a bit. And uh, yeah, I think that you know you need to look to your your same sex to uh, to have those kind of friendly relationships. Uh, yes. I say yes. Yeah, I think so. Um, I do, personally. I mean, we we're are, just friends. We're friends. Yep. We're co workers never, and we're friends. It's so. never been more than that. Um, you have to set boundaries, I would say. But yes, it's possible. Women tend to get emotionally connected to someone, so I, that's why I feel that they cannot be friends with a guy. Within a guy, I mean, it, it feels different than having a female friend, because females go through the same stuff, but having a guy's point of view on female problems helps you out a lot. Yes, I do. Not at all. I think, as me being a man, like, I know the ultimate trick or if, if nothing else works when it comes to females, we try to be their friends and try to sneak in and say, hey, okay, we're just friends, but then if that, if that opportunity presents itself, First, the, guy, the guy's gonna jump in for the catch, uh, no, no doubt in my mind. So every girl who thinks they have a good, hey, he's my best friend, yeah, he's, he's plotting on you, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was a very interesting opinion on <laughs> relationships. Um, all right, we're going to be talking about guys and girls' friendships. Is it possible for a guy and a girl to be just friends? On three, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, I thought we were all gonna... Yeah. Gonna yeah, I'm gonna say absolute, absolutely not. No, no, of course not. Yeah, same team. Why? No. no. Same team. Why can't guys and girls be friends? Why not, bro? Yeah, I think, I think a lot of reasons. I think, I think one of the things is uh, uh, friendships are supposed to be ideally something that are, that's sustainable, right? Something that you build a relationship with somebody that is ultimately going to be you know, sustained over time. Uh, if I was texting with a female or talking with a female tonight after this show while I'm kind of you know, laying in my bed next to my wife, my wife is not <laughs> going for that. So, so the relationships that I build at some point, those relationships would have to be terminated or end. Um, and so I think for me, a huge part of friendship is sustained presence. Mm -hmm. So that'd be one of the reasons. But like, what, what, if, what if you needed to talk to people? Like, why can't you have, you have colleagues though, right? Like, can't you have female colleagues that are your friends that you never date or anything, even though you're married? You still, I think we, you know, work on a campus, you work at a campus where a lot of your colleagues end up being women. Do you call them your friends or is there a different definition that you call them by? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know that, I, I think sometimes we kind of, you know, it all depends on how you define the word friendship. But I think a lot of times the reason why we have people around us that are the opposite sex is because we're really insecure. And so everybody, it just feels so good. It doesn't matter who you are, it just feels good to have somebody that you're relatively attractive to, uh, that you call your friend, to be able to go out and have coffee with. And I think it just feels good. I think it kind of feels good to the ego. It makes us feel fantastic about ourselves as people see us having coffee uh, 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 with that person. And so I, I think a lot of those relationships honestly are ego driven. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. So your kind of your perspective from what I hear is like if you're married, but for us, like since we're all single, is it wrong for us, like as ladies, to have really close guy friends or for you guys but to have really close girlfriends? Sense because like once you get married, you have to cut that off. And it isn't like a like mm -hmm. a true friend, someone that sticks with you throughout your life. Why do you have you to know? cut it off though? Well, you just can't get that intimate, can it? Well, you don't need to have an intimate friendship, but you can have somebody that you trust and you need to talk to whenever you need but like the stuff I talk to you about, Greg. I can't tell girls. That sounds sketchy. But there are certain things <laughs> that sound really sketchy. Right? Because it yeah. is. Let's talk about it. <laughs> well, well, I would say this. You know, can can you have a friend? Well, yeah, a rock can be my friend. I mean, you know, I have, people have imaginary friends. So can you have friends? Sure. But I think a lot of times, um, you know, what it comes down to is you kind of engage with um, the opposite sex. Uh, I think it's that whole question of, okay, what, what am I trying to gain out of this friendship? And again, I think it's really hard if it's not sustainable because there will come a moment when that relationship becomes inappropriate. Mm -hmm. And for you to sit down and have a confidant, somebody that you tell things to uh, of that nature, I think just gets, it, it can get a little weird. And um, for me, when I was dating, so you mentioned, you know, it, does it change if you're married or single? I don't think it does. I think if you want to be single, I think have a lot of friends that are the opposite sex. <laughs> if you want to be single, uh, because I know when I was dating, and if I, if I engaged a girl that had a lot of guy friends, I go, whoa, yellow or red flag. Uh, and yeah. so, so for me, I think, uh, yeah, I think if you want to have, if you want to be single for a really long time, I think you should have lots of friends that are the opposite gender. Yeah. When yeah. I was doing um, for or against <laughs> on the street, um, I was shocked at how many people thought it was okay to be best friends with a guy, like, or right. with opposite sex. I was kind of shocked. And, um, I talked to a lot of married couples, and they were like, oh, we totally think it's okay to be best friends with the opposite sex. We were best friends, and now we're married. I'm like, yeah. well, well, don't you see that that's like not going to be a long-lasting friendship? Cool like, that's <laughs> the whole point of what I'm asking. Yeah. So I completely agree with what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, that's my so opinion, well. too. <laughs> <laughs> I feel, but that's I, because you want to be seen with attractive girls. No, oh. that's not true, because that I doesn't mean, happen. It's a little bit true. <laughs> no, I don't think it's true. Well, why not? Who doesn't? But yeah. I think that's my point. <laughs> but no, I, if, if I was married, Okay, I'm not married yet. You're the only one that's married. But when I get married, it's going to be the girl, the woman in my life that I love the most and that I want to put everything I can confide into. But what if she doesn't like sports? And I don't have any guy friends. And I'm like, like, who am I going to talk to about the Dolphins losing all the time? Then I think you need pastors in your life to say, why don't you have a lot of guy friends, bro? Yeah. Thank yeah. you. They all keep moving away. <laughs> Dog, okay? You can talk to the dog. I feel like you're not going to be getting another like lady. There are certain conversations and certain colleagues that you can have at work that you can work side by side and call them your friend and that be it. Have a boundary and that yeah. be it. Like, you know, what if, they're, what if you're both married? I'm married and my colleague at work is married and she's a girl. But let's say, you know, we're really close friends. We work every day. Hey, Let's let's all go out on a double date. Let's let's hang out. Isn't that okay or no? Do you not call that person your friend? Yeah, I, I just again, it all depends on how you define the term friend. Yeah. But I think you just have to be really, really careful. Um, and and I, I talk about this a lot. Is that I think um, all of us are susceptible for, to really wild things. All of us are think crazy things, and all of us think jacked up things. And so I think you have to be really careful as you begin to engage in a relationship with somebody of the opposite gender. You can start out with the greatest motives in the world, uh, but man, it, it can get really weird really, really quick. And for me, like even when my wife and I started dating, when we were just boyfriend and girlfriend, uh, um, I made a commitment that man, I. I wasn't going to hang out individually with the opposite sex because I never want to put the person I'm dating in an awkward position mm -hmm. to go, hey, how come I saw Drew hanging out with this other girl? I thought you guys were dating. Yeah. And so for me, I always wanted to honor, even at that time, my girlfriend mm -hmm. at the yeah. time to say, I never want to put her in an awkward situation. And I don't want to be in an awkward situation yeah. where my boys are saying, hey, Drew, what's going on with your girl, man? She's hanging out with these, with these dudes. And so I think a lot of times it comes down to, to a realm of honor. And, and, and I would not want to um, dissuade other guys Guys, if I call this person my friend, this way other guys from wanting to date this girl that I really cared about and I thought was pretty cool. Um, and so w what I always say is, man, if, if she's that cool to hang out, then then man up and date her. <laughs> wow, cool. that's an interesting, interesting perspective. Wait, interesting. Just to finish it up, if you're for it, say I. If you're for guys and girls being friends, no, don't say I. Say you're for it. I just want to see it. Like who's for I'm it? I'm still for it. She's the only one. Yeah, bro. Okay. Well, Greg is alone <laughs> on this one. Guys. So, we've had an interesting discussion against Greg, but right now we're going to go to top 10. <laughs>
Kick, Kick it, it off, off, girl. All right, number 10, your classic superheroes, Batman and Robin. Oh, I can't live without them. Mm. Number oh. nine, Tom and Jerry. Sometimes they have their differences, but they stick true to the end. Oh, but Greg, what about the classic Phineas and Ferb? New Age. Come on now. They make everything. Always. Number seven, it's a tie between Sean and Gus from Psych and Ooh. Turk and JD from Scrubs. Get a little ebony and ivory in there. <laughs> and you can't forget about the kitties. Dora and the Mac. Dora and the Mac. Come she, on now. She runs Close relationships. It was like this. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget for you 90s friends, number five, Keenan and Kel. What up? <laughs> How's it going? But there's a close tie also between the cast of the Friends and uh, How I Met Your Mother. I love both mm. of those shows. That's, that's, that's hard, why they're tied. All right, number three coming in, the classic Bert and Ernie, sticking true to the end. <laughs> but what about my four saucy ladies, my golden girls? Oh, I love Come them. Come on. Betty White, Come let's on. go preach it. And the number one best friendship of all time on TV, Lucille and Ethel, Ooh. for having some splaining to do Come all on. the time. <laughs> all right, this has been your top 10. Thank you for watching. Back to the panel. Peace. <laughs>
I think so. I would have to say yes because I have them. Yeah. Otherwise, well, I'd be a hypocrite. I think be it's, wrong. A it's a it's a it's a double party thing. When when you're when you have a friendship with somebody, it's a, it's an equal thing. So like, if they're your superficial friend, it might not be all your fault. It might be because they're just like you said, they Facebook message you instead of right. calling you. You know, if you really want to be my friend, you can call me and check up on me, and I'll do the mm -hmm. same to you. But like, I feel like it's a give and take. Yeah. It's not just a clear. I mean, thing. I don't really think it's wrong because I think there's everybody, especially since we live on a campus. There's people song. that you're like, oh hey, oh. Right. Hey, mm -hmm. hey, how are you? Like, yeah. I, I don't think that's wrong no. to have people that do that. Yeah. So, I mean, I have a ton. Yeah, and, I, and I think we all operate in concentric circles. So I think we have very close people and as yeah. it gets wider and wider. Um, the only thing that I would encourage everybody to do, don't ever go up to anybody. I don't know why this is socially acceptable and say, what's my name? Oh my don't God. do people annoying. do that? That's people worse. do that. I like That's people do that to me all the time. I can't do that. It just worse. drives me bonkers uh, because it puts me in a weird position. Because then if I know their name, I'm like, oh, your name's Greg. Now it's this is weird because I knew your name. Yeah. Or if I don't know your name, you're like, you just set me up to lose. So I don't like you now. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so I, I just think you know it's weird that when people do that. I've never heard of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's weird. You're never That's that? weird. No. Yeah. What is the point? I don't. I'm, it's just, I'm just like confused. To prove to me that you're my friend. Yeah. Yeah. We are not superficial friends. Prove to me that we are. That person is sadly insecure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. That's there's really a lot sad. of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's pretty weird. I definitely think that in um, the media realm, you are gonna have superficial friends. Mm -hmm. I think that like if you have a Facebook, then if we want to call a superficial friend someone we don't talk to all the time, we're gonna have those. Yeah. But I think that when it comes to personal relationships, like even on campus, like I don't think we should have superficial relationships. I mean, I think we can have acquaintances that we say hi to, but if we're gonna call someone our friend, then I think we need to be there for them. I think that's really important. Yeah, and I think it seems like the words are kind of oppose each other. Yeah. To so yeah. talk about superficial and friends, I think so. Yeah, probably yeah. it's a terminology thing. I think it's yeah. okay to, to get to know people and, and, and get that first initial conversation, so you can say hi. I recognize you as a person. Yeah. And if you want to get to know me, that's fine. We can sit down and have coffee. I don't have anything against being your friend. But if you really want to know what's inside, you kind of have to have that yeah. close circle. And for you. Especially if they're female, if you're interested in that. Yeah. Especially yeah. if yeah. they're female. Yeah. <laughs> good looking females. I want to see the That's ratio of cool, friends, guys and girlfriends. Yeah. I'll, I'll let you know. Yeah. Like 800 to nothing. <laughs> oh Facebook. my gosh. Okay, guys. Well, this has been very interesting. Uh, but right now, we are going to go to Chelsea Webb with Food for Thought. <laughs> Over our lifetime, we develop a lot of friendships. Some of them we draw close to, and others we just let go by the wayside. But why is that? Is it because we tend to cling to those people who have the most similar interests like us, and those who don't we just tend to ignore? Is that the right attitude to have? I mean, the Bible does tell us that we need to love our neighbors. And if you think about it, what good is it if we just love everyone who loves us? Is there even a reward in that? Think about it. What relationships do you need to fix in your life? I'm Chelsea Webb, and that's your Food for Thought. Thank you, Chelsea, for that food for thought. Um, all right, guys. This panel, we want to talk about good and bad friends. Um, what do you guys think is a bad friend? How would you define a bad friend? I think that has to do a lot with influence. Whoa. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just attacking. Yeah. Uh, a lot to do with influence and the fact that like everybody's brought up a different way. Um, okay. Boy meets world. Corey kind of Sean kind of started a little bad, you know. He was a little rough kid, and Corey was like this. This isn't this, top ten. I know it's not top okay. ten, and I forgot Corey and Sean. Okay. Dang it! All right, but uh, but sh they both had like this opposite growing up. Now in the beginning, Sean was kind of like this bad friend, but in after a while, they both kind of dynamically equaled out each other. But that doesn't always happen in real life. But yeah. Sean was still a good friend. He was. No, that's what I'm saying. He was oh, a good okay. friend. But what are some examples of like, like, so like bad friends? Like I think bad friends are people who just aren't there for you when you need them the most. Yeah. You know, like like something horrible happens in your life. You lose a loved one. Like yeah. a, like your mom dies, or, or or perhaps like like horrible things happen in our lives. You know what I mean? And if your friends aren't really there for you, then are they a good friend? No. no. Right. I mean, like, I, well, I have the same answer to that. I feel course, like I could but. list like a hundred characteristics of a bad friend: manipulative, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like rude, mean, like yeah. You know. I think what I've noticed in my life is like I've learned to notice the qualities in a good friend yeah. because it's easy to list all the qualities in a bad friend. Yeah. yeah. So for me, like a good friend is someone who encourages you and lifts you up and um, respects your opinions as much as they respect their own. And I'm just kind of wondering how y'all feel about this. But say you have a bad friend. Okay. How much time do you spend? putting into that friendship. For example, like, say I have a bad friend, but I don't want to just cut them off because yeah. I could be a witness to them. I could be a good friend. Yeah. I could show them what a good friend is. Yeah. So if you have a bad friend, like, how much time do you put into that friendship? I think 
Oh, did you want to say no, something? No, go ahead, okay. Gregory. <laughs> I think it has a lot to do with the fact, can you be influenced, who influences more? I mean, we, in Christianity, we have iron sharps iron, but we also have to witness to the lost. So as long as you can be in a friendship with them without them influencing you badly, I mean, so you have to kind of have some distance with them, um, but as long as you can kind of influence your good Christian influence on them without getting the negative effects on you, I think that there's a line there somewhere. Hmm. I think... Oh, sorry. Chelsea's right. <laughs> dying. I just have to say this because I guess dealing with psychology, something that I've noticed, <laughs> oh, no. seriously, something that I've noticed is that if, if we consider ourselves a good friend, when we are in a relationship with a bad friend, we have a tendency of trying to change mm -hmm. them. Okay. Then we get into trouble. Yeah, because okay. that's true. That, yeah. When you're in a relationship, you shouldn't have to change you, a person. Exactly, and you can't yeah, control right. other people's actions. That's yeah. something that I had to like let go of. I had I was in a relationship with a bad friend, and she was very manipulative and put me down spiritually. Yeah. Like she would be like, you're out of the will of the Lord, like just straight up when I wasn't even like doing anything. And it was really hard for me. And eventually it came to a point where I had to cut that friendship off yeah. because yeah. there was nothing I could do to change the situation. And she was so controlling and manipulative, it was harming me as a person. So. Yeah. Now, what I think is unfortunate about good friends and bad friends is there, there are things that I think good friends are supposed to do yeah. that a lot of people don't like. And as soon as they do them, people say, oh, you're a bad friend. Okay. For instance, rebuking someone. Yeah. Like, 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 if you have a friend who's in sin and doing stuff that they shouldn't be doing, a good friend is going to call them out on it every time. Hey, man, you shouldn't be doing that. Hey, like, like, I don't appreciate that. You're better than that. Encourage them, but rebuke them. Like, that's what a good friend would do. Mm -hmm. But, like, unfortunately, a lot of people just go, oh, no, he's not my friend. He, he's judgmental, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, 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 why do you think that, like, like why are people get so sensitive about that? I don't know. I, I really appreciate it when, when I have a friend, like, I think we've done this a couple times, all, all of us have, is, is when we... You have somebody that can stand by you and say, hey, that's not the right thing. You're doing the wrong thing. But then they don't just walk away. They don't just say, all right, peace go. out, get your life together. They go, hey, bro, I'm here. Girl, bro, I'm here, and I'm going to stand by you, and I'm going to help you. I'm yeah. going to push you until yeah. you get to the level where I know you want to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like and I think that's the biggest difference, too, is how you approach a situation. Because if you're just like, um, you need to fix this, that's not loving. That's not helpful. Yeah. Yeah. That's literally just pointing out people's flaws. Yeah. But if you actually like approach someone saying that you want to help them, and you're like, hey, I see this, and can we talk about it? Mm -hmm. That is completely different mm -hmm. than just attacking someone mm -hmm. is what it comes down to. Yeah, I, I know that um, us girls, we all live together. <laughs> And honestly, like, until I came to college, I did not know what a true friend was, like, at all. Um, and I had so many rela friendships where no one would be honest with me. Mm. And my friends, like, I would be totally living in sin and doing crazy things, mm. and everyone just smiled and watched me do it. Mm. And I honestly thought that was a good, that's what a good friend was. Mm. And then I got to college, and I had you ladies <laughs> who, like, um, I I, no, but I mean, like, just, um, just guided me and encouraged me with love. You know, and I didn't feel rebuked at all because it was done with love. Yeah. Like, I had never even experienced someone telling me right from wrong, like, in a friendship. But y'all did it with love, and it worked out for us, so love you. good friends. Okay. <laughs> well, what do you guys think, just a quick question, what do you guys think are the, can actually be the positive things of having a, neg a negative relationship or mm. ha being involved with a, a bad friend? You sure learn from it. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> I think you, learn, sure. to, you learn to figure out what you want in a friend. Uh, and mm -hmm. a companion, and, and even a spouse, you kind of learn, like if you had a bad, you know, friendship, and you move on, you kind of look for, okay, this is what I want in a friend, this is what I don't want in a friend, and this is the things that I can do to give to that friendship, and not necessarily take from it, so that that friendship doesn't end badly, even mm -hmm. if it is a bad person, to influence them in a certain way, but like, so you don't end up burning that bridge yeah. again, because I, I really don't like cutting people off in my mm -hmm. life, I like to have that there, just in case there is one day where they're like, you know what, I said something bad, I want to go back and talk mm -hmm. to them yeah. and then be even a better witness in the long run. And also, <laughs> I'm sorry, also I think if you are in that bad relationship, it can show you how not to act and yeah. how not to treat people because I know I learned a lot from, yeah. from that situation. So, yeah. If there's one thing we all know is a good friend is some, someone you want to stick on, like hold on to and not, don't let them go. No, honestly Forever. though, because it's hard to come by really good friends. So like we all need to be good friends and yeah, so <laughs> it's an interesting discussion. Um, we'll be right back after that. In high school, I had a friend that I considered to be my best friend. And we went through a lot together, but I realized as the friendship continued that it was one-sided and that I um, was going to her with stuff, but she wasn't there for me all the time or she would push me to the side um, in different situations. And it really, really hurt me emotionally and I actually became depressed because of it. Slowly I had to push the friendship away 
and back away from that and realized that that wasn't a healthy relationship. But through this, I realized that my friend Charity, who I've known since fourth grade, she was a great friend and she was always there for me and encouraged me spiritually. Um, she, she just really modeled what a good friend is. And in the Bible, it talks about how Jesus is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And Charity really, really modeled that and taught me ways that I can be a good friend. And I just want to encourage you to continue being a good friend because whether you know it or not, your friendship means something to someone. So be the kind of friend that you would want to have. All right, well, we definitely shared a lot of opinions, differing opinions tonight, uh, but we're going to go to the Word and see what it has to say about friendships. In Proverbs 18, 24, it says, One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Hmm. Um, tonight we've talked a lot about good friends, we've talked about bad friends, unreliable friends, superficial friends, and our challenge and encouragement to you tonight is to ask yourself if you've been a good friend. Right now in your life, there are people that you know that you call your friends. And are you being the best friend that you can be to them? Are you loving them through tough times? Are, are, are you standing up for them? Are you encouraging them? Are you rebuking them when they're in sin? And then, and then for those of you that maybe you don't have any good friends, you know, like maybe you need to start seeking out good relationships. So what I want to do right now is we're going to bow our heads and close our eyes. We're going to pray. And I want to pray for everyone that's here in the studio, everyone that's watching on television, that you would not only be a good friend, but that you would find good friends. So let, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are our friend. God, you have been so good to us, Lord. And, and I pray that through your power and through your spirit that you would lead us to be good friends. God, that, that we would be friends that are closer than a brother and a sister, Lord, that we would be there for one another in love. God, I pray that we would also seek out good friends, people that would lift us up and encourage us and strengthen us as iron sharpens iron, Lord. So we praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Awesome. All right, a big thank you to Andrew Gard for being on our panel today. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, please send us a message on Facebook or tweet us. And as always, don't forget to live, live it, it raw. raw. I didn't do nothing. I had no team. Here we go. And that's me. Okay. That's fine. You can stop that. Can I do that while you bring it back in? No. Fun show. They're crying because they feel like you hurt their feelings because you don't want to be their friend. Well, that is Who doesn't want to be someone's weird. friend? Who in here is a female and is my friend? <laughs> <laughs>